just tee on to episode four of Winning Ideas TV. Today we're going to talk about jobs, skill, takes to succeed in today's environment. And my special guest is Paul Unger, who's got over 41 years of executive research experience. He's worked with startups, Fortune 500 companies, technology companies, and Paul is also one of the inventors, and this is no joke, <laughs> of retained executive search. <laughs> but you really were a pioneer uh, back in the mid-70s when the industry didn't even exist. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in. We'll have a nice conversation with Paul, and if you Facebook Live, type them in. Um, but thank you for watching. So Paul, let me just start off. And by the way, we have a on my LinkedIn page, we talked about the one thing never for a job. So go check that out. That's uh, uh, t Paul talks about you know being prepared for interviews and whatnot. But Paul, a lot of our party are under the age of 35. And things should they be doing in terms of building? What advice would you give? Okay. Yeah. So, so first of all, uh, I think you need to be a continuous learner. You come out, you have your your, your undergraduate degree, but that's not enough. You need to be a continuous learner. And the reason I say that is. You will not have, in most cases, a single career. Uh, the, the rapidity of how industries start, mature, and end is that you can expect to have three, four, or five careers totally different from the one you started. Five careers with ten different companies. That's right. Or more. Yeah. 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 In our day and age, it was one, one career with yeah. one company yeah. or... You know, one career with right. two companies. Yeah, you know, the, 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 the original concept is you join a company, you spend your 30, 35 years, right. you get your gold watch, yeah, you yeah, go yeah. off into the sunset with a nice retirement. Yeah. That, that's gone. Right. Well, when you say, yeah. so are you talking about the necessity to be curious, or are you talking about to find your inner curiosity? Um, and then, and in terms of learning, I recommend uh, that one would learn. Are you talking about technical things? Are you talking about soft skills? You know, what, what types of people are more tangible? So, uh, functional. So, if you are um, oriented toward management, uh, then you want to learn a lot more about management theory, about leadership, about uh, what makes you an effective an engineer uh, or a physicist or a scientist. Uh, then, then you need to keep maintain currency with area of expertise. Um, if you are a scientist who wants to be a manager, you learn business. Skills. So you're saying you saw in whatever sort of segments you're. Yeah. Let me see about MBA. What do you think about MBAs today? Do you think they're still valuable? Absolutely. You do. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 first of all. The, the advanced degree, the MBA or the master's degree, it is roughly equivalent to an undergraduate degree for our generation. Mm -hmm. um, so the, You're the, saying it's yeah. table stakes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Right. What about writing a book? Well, a lot of people are writing a book now. Written books, it's almost like so. Now, MBA is table stakes. Is writing a book table stakes yet, or not yet? Well, I think that depends. Uh, do you have the knowledge base that is going to be of interest and in education to others? Um, I, I don't. I don't think everybody should write a book. I don't think everybody will read everybody's book. Mm -hmm. But uh, if, if if you are a leader in your technology, a leader in your field. Um, and you can impart knowledge, knowledge, and so if you let's say you know, let's talk, not talk about yeah. writing, but let's say a lot of you guys are writing articles on Medium or you have your own blog or whatever. Mm -hmm. How does an employer view that? Uh, I think employer. I guess it depends on the generation yeah, of the it, advanced. It, uh, right, how, it, how advanced. Well, it, 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 again, today, as, it, when you are applying for a job. Uh, all of your 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 life is to inspection. Mm -hmm. 
So your your social posts, your media right. posts, your blogs uh, are all open to be reviewed by a prospective employer. So you really want to be very careful with what you put online. And this is not new advice. Everybody will tell you this. Mm -hmm. um, but you really do very little uh, that, that you can hide. Right. So you really want to be careful. Yeah. So information has become commoditized, right? Yeah. So, you know, where somebody used to get hired because they had this specialized knowledge mm -hmm. or, or, you know, um, you know, deep on certain things, it's now a Google search away or a Wikipedia yeah. entry away. So you're sort of losing that, you know, knowledge is no longer a differentiator or a reason for you to get hired, right? How important are, and I, I preach, you know, your network is your net worth. You guys have heard me say that a million times, and I really do believe it. I, I personally believe net, your network, the size, depth, and quality of your network is could be a differentiator, usually is, with an employer who, um, because everyone else is smart, hard, Working and how do you differentiate uh, in terms of you know the network? What are your thoughts about the most personal network, and what are some other potential differentiators that a potential candidate yeah. can bring to the table? Uh, you know, so again, you really have to look at things functionally. If you are a, uh, a finance and accounting professional, uh, and and your focus is on the internal finances of your organization. Yeah, your network is not all that important. Okay, that's okay? a great point. Yeah. That's a great uh, uh, Your network is very sure. If you are a, a leader, if you are aspiring to a presidency, CEO, mm -hmm. uh, then your, your network is, is critical. Uh, for me, I live and die on my network. Yeah, and your job, your job is to network. My job is my network. Right. Yeah, that's right. right. So, and what are the differentiators? Though, can some can a young person bring to the table? So it's no longer about, um, you know, what, how can they differentiate from other candidates? I, this morning, I was down at the board of trade farewell dinner for mm -hmm. breakfast. Ran into a buddy of mine. Who's highly super qualified, highly yeah. Yeah, yeah, highly qualified, and you know he uh, went into a venture back company as a hot candidate, but then six hot candidates. Yeah. So you know you, he's trying to figure out how does he put himself in a position to win. Do you have any general or specific advice that? Way? Not everybody fits every culture. Mm -hmm. okay, so so I mean that's the first thing is you you want to try to understand the culture of the organization. Um, and, and personalities, and and not everybody's going to fit into that. Mm -hmm. um, you also have to understand where where your comfort level is. So if if you are a so you're saying personality and culture could be a differentiating advantage. Absolutely, to somebody. okay, For sure. So let's mm -hmm. take that further. How do we? How do I? Let's say I want to get a job at Company X, mm -hmm. and they have a certain culture. How do I position myself? in a way where I can differentiate against the other candidates that are applying for that position. Cultural. You may, you may have to, it becomes experience based. Mm -hmm. So you have to experience the interview. Um, you, really a two way street. Right. Uh, you should be getting as much information as you are giving. Uh, but one of the things that as an interviewee, uh, you want to ask those questions. What What is the company culture? What makes a person successful here? Uh, what are some faults here? You also want to ask to meet other people beyond just the interviewers on your schedule. Uh, you want to be able to ask uh, people who would be your peers. What's possible? Um, Interesting. So you've been in the business 41 years. You probably started with uh, the greatest generation uh, client you know you probably placed people I know you placed a lot of CEOs but then you placed a bunch of baby boomers probably generation X Millennials are you seeing any you know massive shifts or trends in sort of your industry as well as sort of the job market itself um, based off of these generational differences or well, technology I've really read about like is there any kind of insights that you can bring to the table for our audience here that they haven't already read about uh, with your 
it's a breadth of experience. Um, okay, so, so let, let, let me, let me, there's something I want to say. Right? All these conversations about millennials mm -hmm. tend to lump them as a, as a right. group with all the same traits. Yeah, that drives me nuts. Yes, really they're, they're, they're yeah. not a group. They all are individuals, some of whom have different uh, ideas about life than your mother did or, or, or your great uncle did. So, so the first thing you want to do is look at the millennials as individuals. And number one, uh, recruiters, or executive search firms, uh, you, you understand that we're hired to find the star. Mm -hmm. okay? So I don't care what the, what the perceived traits are of a class. I want to know what your traits are. I want to know right. what makes you special and how you're going to make my client better. Uh, so yeah. it sounds like those are pretty time-tested principles, mm -hmm. right? You've done that with all the generations of... Uh, yeah, that doesn't change. You're right. The technology changes. How, how you connect with people changes. Mm -hmm. uh, the ability to learn about people and for people to learn about organizations changes. Yeah. But you're still looking at it. It's more difficult today because we're in a full employment economy. Yes. Okay. So, so now uh, the candidate has a slight edge mm -hmm. because there aren't that many people qualified, available, looking. Right. Uh, and that's where the, put a commercial for myself, yeah. that's where the, where, yeah. where the executive search consultant people are not looking for people who are looking for jobs, we're going in and reaching in finding people who are highly qualified that can be interested, enticed to a better. What about your industry? I know you're at the C-suite level, but yeah. let's say for the folks that are less, you know, C-suite, you absolutely need to have, yeah, you're hiring the boss, right, or a VP level. But let's sort of mid-level mm -hmm. executive recruiters or search. The industry, what, what's going to happen to that industry? Is it commoditizing? Is LinkedIn putting that group out of business? Yeah, link, uh, link, well, LinkedIn is both... Um, the greatest tool mm -hmm. and the greatest challenge mm -hmm. uh, in, in the recruiting industry. Right? So uh, it, it's leveled the playing field. So the, the, the company uh, resources have the same information as the, as the external recruiter. Yes. Now the question is, does the company resource have the time, the energy, the, uh, the desire to go through the, the exhaustion they're just very exhausted. Yeah. I can imagine. So what's going to happen to those companies, the search companies? Well, um, the, the, some will, uh, will pay, go away. Yeah. Uh, one, of the, one of the problems with the recruiting business, and I've said this for years and years and years, mm -hmm. uh, is that there's no bar to entry. So uh, anybody can uh, get laid off, decide, well, you know what, I, I've... Dozens of people over my career find jobs, and you know, I, well, I'd be really good at this, and they hang up a single and they say, "Hey, I'm a, I'm a recruiter." Yeah. Well, um, those folks get washed out uh, as as times get tougher. Part of the the, the, the interesting thing about the and again, I, I, I hate to be so generational, but one of the one of the, the, the problems. Uh, issues, uh, challenges for the millennial. They haven't really gone through. Mm -hmm. Okay, things have been pretty good. They had some recession. Yeah. Uh, well, they saw their parents through some tough times ten, ten years yeah, ago. Yeah, but but it was, it, it, unemployment got to what maybe six percent. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. You have. We haven't seen yeah, massive haven't unemployment, seen, yeah, yeah. massive interest yeah, rates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nor nor have you dealt with. Uh, in most cases, you know, our, our, our wonderful fighting forces represent 1% of our population. Nobody gets drafted. So um, war and, and things that are international are sort of television stories, experience them, except for that wonderful 1%. Yeah. Uh, there will come a time 
when things are going to change. When things are going to get through 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, things will change. You will have challenges that you don't expect. Do you have any advice for how to be prepared uh, for adversity or how to be tough? <laughs> Aside from uh, yeah. going through it, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, toughness is an internal thing. Yeah, uh, you, you, you either some people are born with it, some people are trained to it, some people develop it uh, as a result of adversity, and some people never do. Yes, great. I, I, I think that, I think the real answer is be prepared. Be, understand that things will change, no matter what you are doing. Things will change. That's right. And you work with a lot of startups out there. Are you seeing them, you know, change anything, you know, in terms of relative to new hires? It's a very challenging market out there, as we know, especially in the DC areas. Yeah, no, um, very, very tight. What are you seeing employers do in terms of, uh, aside from hiring companies like yeah. yourself, but uh, how are they coping with this labor shortage? Because I hear from a lot of people that uh, finding Quality labor quickly is their bar is the barrier. Yeah, oh, no question. So, what are you seeing out there? So, uh, the the the, uh, the wise employer really focuses on the culture of the company, and and that culture is again, as I said earlier, it's one of that promotes continuous learning. It's one that promotes uh, develop employees. I, I think, frankly. Uh, with all due respect, I think the ping pong table in the lounge is less important mm -hmm. than... What about the kegs of beer on tap? The, the, is that important? It, it's tangential. For Reagan, it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, right. it, you know, it, yeah. it, it, it's a nice to have. Yes. But I, I, I'd rather you focus on being for uh, advancement, uh, for educational advancement. I'd rather you focus on uh, internal promotion. I'd rather you focus on career development. Right. Community service, maybe. Yeah, community work service, life balance. Yeah. You know, work life, you know, work -life balance is a real interesting concept. Yeah, right? okay. And, and that's one, that's that's where um, the, the millennials class, and again, I, 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 I hate using classes, but yep. as a class, the millennials have a um, concept of work life balance. They're, they're, many of them are demanding a greater work life balance. Mm -hmm. um, and employers have to have to um, accommodate, otherwise yeah, people will leave. Right? Absolutely, but uh, you also have to expect that if you're going to uh, that work-life balance, which means you want to leave at five o'clock almost every day, so you can go home and co-parent, uh, you may be giving up uh, the edge on promotional opportunity right. to. The individual that still wants to work till seven o'clock to, uh, yeah. to achieve the goal. Got it. Well, we're pretty much out of time, so I want to wrap with one final question for Paul here, who's seen it all, um, started the industry, invented the industry, <laughs> co-invented the industry, and now you've seen the cycles. You've seen technology sort of take over and, and just change everything. Uh, three pieces of advice okay. for a young person out there in, in order to not just um, survive in the next 20 to 30 mm -hmm. years and you know but to, to thrive you know three things that you would do if you were you know 25 years old right now okay. um, to make sure that you were okay and still run you were 55 what would they be continuous learning yep work on your personality get feedback on from others, from your from your bosses, from your peers, uh, on how people perceive you in the organization. Do they perceive you as helpful? Do they perceive you as a leader? Do they perceive you as a follower? Do they perceive you as difficult to work with or easy to work with? Uh, but understand how others see you, and then work on improving that image. Well, that is nice. And number three would be what? Um, be prepared for change. It, it will happen. It will guarantee to happen. 
Yeah, I would go one step further and say embrace change, like learn to yeah. love change and know that it's part of your development and it's a good thing. Absolutely. Instead of, you know, the old book, Who yeah. Moved My Cheese, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, people don't like change. I think it's our, uh, you know, reptilian brain that doesn't want, but it's a good thing. It is this a good thing. You know, and whether it's whether good, bad, or different, it's there. It is. So it is. Yeah. 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 Well, I wanted to um, thank Paul for uh, for your well, time and for your wisdom, and thank everybody for tuning in. And uh, please check us out. We're on Facebook Live, and Paul is Paul Unger, U N G E R. And if you need any more further advice, uh, Paul, hopefully. Okay. Thank you, guys. Paul Unger www.paulunger.com and he knows everything about uh, about what we're talking about so <laughs> thank you. see you soon okay thank you